All right, everyone. Today's video is about the top five Destiny exotics that every Guardian needs in their arsenal, why everyone should have them, and where to find them. This guide will actually just be exotic weapons and not exotic armor pieces because A, not all Guardians can use all the armor, and B, putting weapon in my title almost assures that I will get demonetized right away. And I do content creation full time, so yeah, I have to jump through hoops to not get choked out by YouTube. Without further ado, let's get started. The Mida Multi-Tool is one of the easiest guns in the game to acquire. It requires zero RNG and can be received from the Enhanced Quest Chain on Earth within the EDZ, which shows up after completing the campaign and reaching level 20, and is given as a reward after completing various quest phases. It does require at a certain point that you dismantle five other scout rifles and get some kills with a certain criteria, but overall it's just a matter of grinding it out and spending the time. There are two reasons this gun is essential to every Guardian. First is its scaling drop power. The Mida tool, and its mini tool companion, will be given to the player at a scaling power level to what they were when they reach its reward phase to begin with, and it can be used deliberately to gain power levels at specific stages. Second, it is one of the most powerful, and common, weapons used in PvP. A top tier strategy being used right now, in the Crucible and in Trials, is focus firing with the Mida tool and dropping enemies insanely fast. It isn't the most enjoyable strategy to face at times, or to use, but it's strong and it can allow players to compete where they might otherwise fall short with alternative weapons. Not all players enjoy PvP in Destiny 2. Not all players will even ever touch PvP in Destiny 2. And outside of PvP, the Mida tool is nothing special. But for various milestones and challenges which reward powerful engram gear which can advance your power level, PvP is a necessity. And in those cases, the Mida tool can turn the grind from a spree of losses into non-stop wins if used properly. Risk Runner is a submachine gun rewarded from the Sacrilege quest on Io. The gun is a reward option given to every single player who completes this quest within the campaign and is a perfect addition to every Guardian stockpile. If you don't choose this gun at first, I highly recommend making another character and grabbing it at a later point if you don't find it in an engram first because of its huge value. The SMG basically functions like a mini Stormcaller super. Upon taking arc damage, the weapon's strength increases, shots have a chance to chain lightning damage between enemies, and they return ammo directly to the magazine. This chance, as of right now, is very very high, and the result is a gun that can be continuously fired without ever reloading chaining damage between nearby enemies, and dominating for long periods of time if you are taking arc damage consistently. Since there are only three special damage types in Destiny, arc, void, and solar damage, arc damage is actually very, very common, and this gun can be used to devastating effect in nightfall strikes, certain missions, parts of the raid, or even public events. The Wardclip Coil is harder to obtain than the previous two. As of right now, it is a drop from exotic engrams only, which are themselves uncommon. However, there are quite a few things you can do to increase the chance to obtain them. These strategies will help you get more exotics in general, not just the Wardcliffe Coil. You can pop Fireteam Medallions and do heroic public events with a group, one of the well-known easiest methods of getting exotic engrams. You can play Crucible matches, and you can also join a clan of level 3 or higher and get increased rewards from public events. Upper Echelon is currently accepting clan members. It's over level 3, and as the clans fill up, we will create additional cloned splinter clans to accommodate all the members, so it's an easy way to net powerful gear engrams as well as an increased loot chance. There is a link in the description down below. One last way, though not very practical, is to level a new character all the way through the campaign and get a guaranteed exotic engram from Zavala. This is a lot of work, but the engram will also scale to your current light level if you swap over all your gear, so there are multiple benefits. Lastly, the exotic may also be available for purchase at some point from Xur, so keep an eye out, but it hasn't been so far. Once you get your hands on one, you will have access to the best PvE rocket launcher in the entire game and an absolute beast for monster clearing. The launcher fires a continuous long volley of projectiles, each detonating for good damage, and the true value comes from the weapon's automatic reload. Picking up a heavy ammo drop will reload the shot directly into the Wardcliffe coil, allowing for rapid fire volleys of chained rockets. This weapon can be used to add tons of time during timed nightfalls, which reward kills, or kill huge packs of enemies quickly in group events and raids. Merciless is a fusion rifle occupying the heavy weapon slot, same as the Wardcliffe Coil, and is the number one boss killing item in the game. Most of the time. In some circumstances, there's another one that is more valuable. 
This item can be obtained just like the Wardcliffe Coil as they draw from exotic engrams and was actually available from Xur last weekend. Hopefully everybody grabbed it. I did a video at the time on why everyone should grab it because of how good it is. The gun's perk, Conserve Momentum, is where the magic is. Non-lethal hits, which happen in rapid succession against large bosses, lessen the charge time, resulting very quickly in a spammable super damage attack, which can melt even the toughest enemies. Also, reloading immediately after a kill will strengthen the gun's power, meaning that pretty much any trash mob can be killed with one shot, reloaded, and then the player can spam out chain shots against a high health enemy with even higher base damage. All in all, this gun has the highest burst damage in the entire game and can only be beaten in very specific boss fight encounters by the next gun on our list. Now, before anyone starts banging on their keyboard, but upper echelon, cold heart was for pre-order. I can't get a cold heart. Cold heart is a f overpowered money grab by Bungie to give like you who pre-order an advantage yes cold heart was obtained by pre-order but that is not the end of it it can be received for all those that did pre-order by getting to level 20 getting to the farm and talking to the gunsmith and my gosh is this thing overpowered when used properly for those who did not pre-order the fine print has some solutions for you first the gun can also be received for buying the digital deluxe edition the limited edition or the collector's edition of the game but all of those cost money. Basically, spend more money, buy a different edition, even after release, and you'll get this special exotic. Uh, but if you don't want to do that, there's a little bit more fine print we need to remember. And that is, Cold Heart can be attained through gameplay starting December 5th. So there you have it. The weapon can be grabbed if you pre-ordered, bought if you didn't, and if you still want to get it, but you want to get it for free, it can be grabbed or farmed on December 5th or after. Now, it may take some time, I understand that, it's a whole controversial system, uh, but that's the gist of it. Now that we know where to get it, let's discuss why it is so important to have one. Cold Heart shoots a consistent beam, but the kicker is that it does exponentially more damage the longer it remains on a target. This is a huge deal. Additive damage is normal in video games. Multiplicative damage is strong and rare in video games. It usually results in very high player power. And exponential damage is godlike. This is the weapon being used right now to one-phase Callus, the final boss on the raid. You can even one-platform him. Certain squads are getting very close to that, which is just absolutely unheard of for a boss like that. Um, you can make mincemeat of most tough encounters with this weapon. Some people throw it in their vault and don't find it useful, but the truth is, it's just flat-out broken. There are also other interactions that make Cold Heart even stronger. It's not just the gun by itself, it's how it interacts with a whole bunch of different mechanics within the game. One being the Luna Faction Boots for the Warlock. These boots give Rifts the additional ability to automatically reload yours and allies' weapons when they enter, meaning that there is zero downtime on the beam once you reach the sky-high damage peak. As you can see, I fire it continuously. As long as the Rift is up, I just tag in, tag out, and we're back to full ammo. Pair that with the Empowering Rift for higher base damage, and you have a Wrecking Ball that is unrivaled in the entire Destiny universe. There are many other ways to achieve this effect. Titan shields that allow instant magazine reloads when entering cover will also help. And if even one of your party members has a cold heart, you can modify their damage with your own abilities against tough targets to unreal levels. So if even one of your people in your raid or your nightfall has this weapon, help them deal as much damage as possible. It will make your life better. Hardlight is an auto rifle, allowing the user to change its damage type on the fly from void to solar to arc and back. The versatility from this cannot be ignored. It can help with rotating nightfall missions or augment to the damage type the majority of enemies are weak to on a specific planet or in a specific encounter, and you can break shields and cause AoE explosions with this gun much more frequently than other guns, and you can always just change it up if you find the next encounter with the next group of enemies, change it over to arc or void or solar, whatever. All in all, it's a great weapon to have. That's going to do it for this top exotics guide. Hopefully there was some information in here that was helpful in one way or another. And if you want to support, there's a bunch of links down below. There's the clan, the Twitch live stream, the upper echelon forums, the Amazon link, etc. It's all down there. I try to cram in as much info as I can instead of stretching every single video to 10 minutes plus, even though, you know, it isn't going to make it uh, with long unedited gameplay and repeat myself 50 different times to make my videos rank, etc. And I think, honestly, as my own little personal protest, this whole clickbaity, stretching videos, garbage, uh, I'm just going to start cutting to black in mid-sense.